Father, again, we are here. Thank you, Lord, for that worthy ministration from the choristers. Thank you, Lord, for the strength we receive from that prayers. And we are confident that you are the one holding us by the right hand of your righteousness. You will sustain us. That we will not fall by the wayside. We will make it, we will prosper in your purpose. And we will have a testimony having lived for God. Lord, I ask that this morning again you will speak to us like never before. We receive your word as your word again. Holy Spirit, fill this house. Speak in the language that we will understand. Let there be a take-home grace, a take-home truth, a take-home revelation, a take-home anointing from this meeting today that we will never forget this encounter. In the name of Jesus. Feed us. Feed us and feed us evermore. We will always depend upon you. Thank you, Father. Great Holy Spirit, be free among us. Do the things that only you can do. Glorify Jesus and establish the counsels of the Father. Help us to know Christ more. Thank you, Father. Blessed, O Lord, be your holiness. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's be seated. This month, again, we continue in the journey that the Holy Spirit started for a few months ago. Especially in the first Sunday of every month, which the Holy Spirit has christened fellowship of the firstborn. And uh, one of the things that the Holy Spirit said we should do in this season, in all fellowship of the firstborn, is to teach more about knowing Christ. To know Christ more. To know Christ more. Because until you know Christ the way you should know him, you will not have an effective life on the earth you will not have an effective destiny to pursue. And that is why it is very, very important. And we have been looking at our text from Philippians chapter 3 for some months ago. Looking at Philippians chapter 3 where Paul the Apostle was talking about what it took him to know Christ after everything he had become in the world, he discovered suddenly that he had not known Christ. He was rich. He was popular. He was of a noble birth. He was uh, religious. He had position. But unfortunately, with all that, he did not know Christ. And that is a possibility today that it's possible to be religious, to be rich, to have title, to have position, and then not to know Christ. That's a possibility. And many, many, many are living lives that are tested to that possibility. But a time came that Paul the Apostle had an encounter, an encounter that changed his knowledge of Christ an encounter that helped him to know Christ, an encounter that began the journey of destiny in his life. And that was why he said in verse 7, But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet, indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellency, did you see now? For the ultimate purpose of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may what? I may gain Christ. He was willing to lose every other thing in the world so that he can gain Christ. That's, that's a good bargain. That's a good bargain. Don't you think so? That's a good bargain. That 
if need be, you will be willing to lose every other thing in the world so that you can gain Christ. It is better than gaining everything in the world and losing Christ. And then we began to look at the characteristics of those who know Christ. The first one, they press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We saw that in Philippians chapter 3 verse 14. The second one, that was the one we did last month. They live their lives on the earth as what? As citizens of heaven. That is Philippians chapter 3 verse 28. The first part of verse 20. Where the Bible says, For our citizenship is in heaven. From which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. They live their life on the earth as citizens of heaven. That even though they are living on the earth currently, they didn't forget that they are not citizens of this earth. They are living their life on the earth as citizens of heaven. And that is the proof that they know Christ. Is that okay? Is that okay? They do not forget where they belong to. Even though they are currently living on the earth. Okay? They allow the culture of heaven to invade their life on the earth. And I gave you several, several, several characteristics that showed that they actually live their life on the earth as a citizen of heaven. They are not careless the way they live their life. They have an understanding that they are different from every other person. Those people that do not have a citizenship of heaven live their life the way they like. They, they are free to do things that they like. But those of us who know Christ, we are convinced that our citizenship is in heaven. And that one day we are going to return. So we allow the culture of our kingdom. Okay? The, the system of our kingdom. The constitution of our kingdom. To guide our conduct on the earth. That's why you cannot but be different. You can't but be different. Because you are not of the world. You are a citizen of heaven. Living on the earth. I want to pray that you will forever carry that consciousness. Let me hear a better amen. amen. That every one of us, no matter how sweet the world is, no matter how wonderful, how, how, how much breakthrough we have experienced, whatever may be the victory that we have in the world, we will always have the consciousness that, look, I am not a citizen of the earth. I'm a citizen of heaven. And you will live by the culture of your kingdom. You will live by the constitution of your kingdom. And that constitution is the word of God. Many times when we live according to the word of God, we appear foolish to the people of the world. But we are the wisest. Because we are living by the wisdom of the Father. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Today I'm going to take another characteristic of those who know Christ. Characteristic of those who know Christ. Well, I think that will be part three. If I got it right, I think that will be part three. They expect the return of Christ daily. They expect the return of Christ daily. Those who know Christ expect the return of Christ daily. Did you get that? Let me take the second part of verse 20. Philippians chapter 3. The second part of, part of verse 20. How do you know those who know Christ? The third major characteristic is that they expect the return of Christ on a daily basis. Let me read verse 20 now. Philippians chapter 3. For our citizenship is in heaven. That is the first part. Now, from it, from which we also eagerly wait. Eagerly wait for the Savior. 
the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, look at how he puts it in the real King James Version. For our conversation is in heaven. Now, from whence? Somebody say from whence now. Also, we look for. I want you to underline look for. Somebody say look for. We look for with bated bread. We look for we, with great expectation. We eagerly wait. We look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's a critical identity or characteristics of those who know Christ. They don't just come to church alone. They don't just read the Bible alone. They don't just pray alone. They don't just fast alone. They look for the coming of Jesus on a yearly basis, isn't it? On a yearly basis? On a what? On a daily basis. When they are in the market, they are expecting him. He might come when I'm in the market. He might return when I'm in the school. He might return when I'm in the house. He might return when I'm on a journey. He might return when I'm in the office. He might return when I'm in the farm. He might return any day. No, no, I don't care the size of your Bible. If you don't expect the coming of Jesus every day, you don't know Christ. I don't care the name of the church you attend. If you are not living your life as somebody that is expecting Jesus on a daily basis, you don't know Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, I'm not the one that, uh, uh, that wrote those qualities. Those characteristics are Bible-based. From whence we look, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Why are we expecting his return? Because he promised he will return. Did you hear that? That's why we expect. He promised he will return. And because he has not come today, does not mean that he's not going to come again. Many people believe that, well, they are just saying, they have been saying he will return, he will return even before my father was born. This is all they preach throughout my youthful days. Now I'm also getting older. I have children also. Some of us have become grandparents. They say, ah, they are still saying this, Jesus will return. When will he come? He cannot deny his word. He said he will return. So, if you know Christ, it is one critical characteristic that must define you. You live your life in a manner that shows that you are expecting the return of Christ every day. Tell somebody that's our business. Tell somebody that's our expectation. Because he promised it. And beloved, he will return. Okay? He will return. I say we return. Expecting the return of Christ on a daily basis is a critical mark of those who know Christ. It's a critical mark of those who know Christ. That's why I tell you that you are not like every other person. You are different. When you get born again, you are different. You expect the, the coming of Christ, the return of Christ on a daily basis. You enter each day with the hope that today Jesus may come. You enter each day. That is the Bible. That is the word of God. You enter each day with the hope that today Jesus may come. You go to that your farm with the hope that today Jesus may come. You go to your school with the hope that today Jesus may come. You go to your business with the hope that today Jesus may come. You go to your office, either as a civil servant or as a business owner, whatever. You go to whatever you are doing on a daily basis with the hope that today Jesus may come. That's a critical mark that you know Christ. Is that okay? When the thought of the return of Christ becomes less appealing to you, When the thought of the return of Christ become repugnant to you. When the thought of the return of Christ become a source of fear to you. 
you are an enemy of the cross of Christ. Somebody say, but that's a very strong language. I didn't say that. The Bible said so. I'll show you now. I want to pray for you that may you not live your life as the enemy of the cross of Christ. Because there are many enemies of the cross of Christ in the church. On the pulpit like this. And they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Because of the way they live their life. In fact, some people have concluded that Christ is not going to come. Now I'm going to tell you one theory, one myth today that is a fallacy that is not consistent with the word of God concerning the return of Christ. And unfortunately, this myth is beginning to gain ground and it is forming the thinking pattern of even the most wonderful believers. We have gotten to the end time that you must not accept anything that is not in the Bible. It does not matter who said it. It does not matter who preached it. Once it is not in the Bible, reject it. Whatever is not found in the Bible is dangerous for you to believe. Is that okay? I believe you are, you are with me today. Praise God. You see, look at verse 18 now. Philippians chapter 3 verse 18. The Bible says, For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Let me have verse 18 in that King James Version. Many, many, even in the time of Paul, the apostle, that is what Paul is saying. Even in that, as at that time, some people have been walking and living their life as the enemies of the cross of Christ. And you think will happen now. In fact, their number is increasing. Many walk. Let me have verse 18, please. Many walk. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now what tell you even what weeping because it's a serious matter that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ even though they have a very big bible even though they come to church even though they pray and fast but they are the enemies of the cross of Christ they are the enemies of the cross of Christ I want to pray for you that you will not be an enemy of the cross of Christ let me hear your amen May you not live your life that shows that you are an enemy of the cross of Christ. So anytime the thought of the return of Christ becomes less appealing to you, anytime the thought of the return of Christ becomes repugnant, and anytime the thought of the returning of Christ becomes a source of fear, when you remember that Christ is coming back and then you are afraid, you have been living a wrong life. You have been living like the enemy of the cross of Christ. Anytime you hear that Jesus is coming back again and it is repugnant to you, it is not appealing to you, you just discard it. Say, well, it's just, that's just Bible theory. It shows that your life is not right. That is what it means to be the enemy of the cross of Christ. Beloved, those who truly know Christ, they live on tiptoe stretching with excitement. Toward the return of Christ. They are living on the edge. Believing with expectation. That Jesus is coming back again. Do you know what it means to live your life on the edge? You are simply loosely attached to the things of this world. You are loosely attached. Did you hear that? Hello somebody. You are loosely attached. You are loosely attached. You are loosely attached. Okay, the resources of life does not become your source. It is simply a tool to achieve the purpose of God. The resources of life is not your success. It's not your boasting. It's not your hope and your trust and your confidence. They are simply a tool to achieve the purpose of God on the earth. My car is not my life. It is a tool to fulfill the purpose of God. My house is not my life. It is a tool. Did you hear what I say? That is what it means to expect the return of Christ. Those who truly know Christ are living their life loosely attached. 
they live tiptoe, expecting that, look, boy, Christ can come today. Christ can come today. Christ can come today. They, they are rich towards God. They are rich towards God. They are rich towards God. May you not be poor towards God. May you not be poor towards God. May you be rich towards God. May you be rich towards the purpose of God. That's what it is because they are expecting Jesus. They do not put all their eggs in the basket of this world that is not reliable. In fact, they put all the eggs of their life in the basket of the truth of the word of God that Christ is returning. They have simply nothing to lose because they were not depending on anything in this world. Is that okay? Is that okay? If you have truly given your life, is there anything you shouldn't be able to give to Jesus? How many of us have given our life to Jesus here? Let me see your hand. Sure. You have given your life to Jesus. I didn't say your car. I didn't say your house. I said your life. So how many of us are giving your life to Jesus? Which one is bigger, your car or your life? Which one is bigger, your money or your life? Do you know the hypocrisy of many people today? How can I claim I've given my life and I find it difficult to give my money? Something is wrong somewhere. Yes or no? Hello? If I've given my life, I shouldn't have problem giving my time. I shouldn't have problem giving my money. I shouldn't have problem giving my talent. Except if I'm deceiving myself. Because my life is more than my money. My life is more than my car. My life is more than my time. My life is more than my talent. It's because I have life that I can have car. It's because I have life that can talk of talent. It's because I have life that can talk of time. You know some people up to today, when you say, why are you not serious with Jesus? You will say, well, I don't have time. I don't have time. Why are you not serious with fellowship? You say, I don't have time. I don't have time. Well, I... People don't have time, but people have time to die. Everybody has time to die. When that appointment is here, out of every schedule, you will find time to keep it. Did you hear what I say? Oh, you didn't hear. Oh, did you hear? When that appointment with death comes, when that time comes, out of no time, no time, no time, you will have time to keep that appointment. Tell somebody, be wise. Have time for God. Have time for Jesus. Have time for the things that will matter on that day. Did you hear me now? Don't live your life saying, I'm too busy. I don't have time. 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 You will have time to die when death comes. People are dying every day. And they, they are busy people, yes or no? Are they not busy people? Many of them busier than people that are still alive. But when the time to die comes, they are to time, they are to die. When your creature is calling you, who are you to say you don't have time? When your maker is calling for your soul, who are you to say you don't have time? Beloved, let us wake up. Let's be wise now. Don't let it be that at the hour of death, you will now say, how I wish I had given my time. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Beloved, those who know Christ, they are looking for the return of Jesus. And it shows in their life. It shows in the way they live their life. It shows in the manner of their conversation. Now, can you bring me back to Philippians chapter 3 verse 20? The word look or wait shows that the return of Christ will be visible. It will be seen by all men. Now, let, let, let's look at this. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we were. From whence also we what? We look. If you have the New King James Version, it says, we eagerly wait. If you have the King James Version. And well, any other versions that you have will also indicate that. Okay? But this King James Version says, we look. So either we look. When the Bible says, we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to me. Or if the Bible says, we eagerly wait for the Lord Jesus Christ. It means that the return of Christ will be visible and it will be seen by all men. I'm not the writer of the Bible. The Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. Did you hear me now? Or let me say the Holy Spirit inspired the writing. From that word, 
we look or we eagerly wait, it shows that Jesus will come. The return of Christ will be visible and everybody will see it. How many of you know that there are some error flying around today? People say, well, Jesus will not come like, uh, Jesus will not come like they are preaching. It is when you die that your own Jesus has come. How many of you have heard that before? And how many of you have believed that? Say the truth. <laughs> hey, he said, this, 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 Jesus is coming. No, Jesus is coming. It is when you die that your own Jesus come. Somebody that died yesterday, they say his own Jesus has come. Somebody that died tomorrow, they say his own Jesus has come. Then if when you die is the time that your own Jesus come, then I want to wonder how many Jesuses do we have? <laughs> and how many, time, how many times will he come? <laughs> Are you mean, do you mean to say that Jesus has no business than to be coming every day? <laughs> because people are dying every day. <laughs> yes or no? People are dying every day. Some people died last week now, so their Jesus came last week. Some people will still die before the end of the year, so their Jesus came like that. That's not the Bible. That's not the Bible. Are you with me? You cannot say somebody died that his own Jesus has come. The death of somebody is different completely from the return of Christ. They are not the same thing and they cannot be equated to mean the same thing. Okay? There is no room for those who are spiritualizing views that says that the promise of Christ's return is fulfilled whenever a Christian dies. So, so when a Christian dies, say Jesus has come. His own Jesus has come. How many Jesus do we have? Talk to me. When they say my own Jesus, then, then, then how many Jesus do we have? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's only one Jesus that we have. Let me, so, let me differentiate for you this morning or today the difference between the return of Christ and the death of the Christian. The two are not the same. The Bible says we look, we eagerly wait for the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ. It implies that he will really come because we are looking unto him. He will really show up. His return will be visible. Did you hear that now? His return will be seen by everybody. Now, death involves the believer going to heaven with the Lord looking for the believer's coming. When a Christian dies, he is going to heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one waiting for his return. So at death, a believer goes to heaven. And his master is waiting for his return. Every believer that had died, their Jesus has not come home. They were the one that returned home. Are you hearing me now? And their savior is the one waiting to receive them over there. That is death. Is that okay? But the return of Christ is Christ coming from heaven to us. And that we believe on the earth. We are looking for him. Is it different? Or is it the same? When Christ returns, the return of Christ means Christ is returning. We are the one waiting for his what? His return. The death of a Christian means a Christian goes to heaven. Did you hear that now? How can you say, when you are going to Lagos and when you are coming back from Lagos, are they the same journey? Is your direction the same? When you are going to Lagos, is it the same with when you are coming back from Lagos? Those that are going to Lagos have their lane. Those that are coming back from Lagos also have their what? Their lane. Are you hearing me now? How can you say when I'm going and when I'm coming is the same? No. At death, believers go home. It is Christ expecting the return of that believer that died. At the return of Christ, Christ come to us from heaven. We that are still left 
are the ones waiting for his return. Some believers will have gone home before Christ return. Are you with me now? Did you hear what I say now? Some believers will have gone home before Christ return. When Christ return, some believers will still be here. So the believers that are still here at his return are the ones expecting his return now. The believers that have gone home are the ones that have died and Jesus is waiting for their return in heaven. The two can never be the same. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Jesus Christ is one and he will return one. He won't come this week and come next week and come like that. And if he used to come like that, then his coming is becoming useless then. In fact, the whole world will be tired of his coming. Why are you coming every day? <laughs> Praise God. But he's going to come once and everyone will see. Did you hear that? Now, having said all that, let me take the last part of today's teaching. And that part is very critical. When a believer is not expecting the return of Christ on a daily basis. Let me tell you 11 things that we show in his life. When a believer is not expecting the return of Christ on a daily basis. The, first, the, the one thing you should know is that he doesn't know Christ. Because to know Christ means to expect the return of Christ on a daily basis. But you, we live in a world today that most people who say they are believers don't expect the return of Christ. How do you know? They will not write it on their forehead. But the Bible says, ye shall know them by their what? By their fruit. Ye shall know them by their what? By their fruit. So, those believers who are not expecting Expecting the return of Christ. Even though they say it in their mouth, we're expecting Jesus. You know, I remember when we were young, when we were in the secondary school, we used to pray. In fact, that time, when we were in secondary school, we, I, in, fact, in fact, I believe that Jesus Christ would come before I, before I wrote my work. We were madly in love with his return. <laughs> we don't pray for anything. I remember every time we go to mountain that time, and we are praying. We say, we are expecting Jesus. We are expecting Jesus. We are expecting Jesus. We don't know when he shall come. We are... Do you know those choruses have disappeared now? Because most believers have become cozy and comforted and settled in this world. I pray that the fire of the Holy Ghost will destroy that comfort in your spirit. You will no longer be comforted in this world. So we begin to sing. We begin to sing. Sometimes even in the rain. In fact, I believe that I will write work before Jesus come. Because every message we are hearing that time is Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. In fact, some people didn't go to school because of that. So why will you go to school? Jesus is coming. Of course, that's foolishness. That is imbalance. The gospel is balance. <laughs> we have to balance it up balance it up. You must be doing something tangible while you are waiting for his return. You must be doing something tangible with your life and for the purpose of God while you are waiting for his return. May God give us balanced teachers. A, a Bible based teacher is a gift to the body of Christ. Because they, they are the one that are instrument of God against the error of the devil. Nobody profits in an atmosphere of error. So even people that have gained admission to university that time, they would they withdraw. They didn't go to school again. So we're expecting Jesus. We're expecting Jesus. I have read, I, I wrote my work now 33 years ago. Jesus has still not come on. Assuming I, I didn't do anything. No school. I told them I'm not going to write work. Because Jesus is coming and all that and all that. That's madness. That's, that is what they call madness with religion. <laughs> I'm telling you what I'm saying now. There is no religion in the Bible. So there is no opportunity for you to become mad with it. Because the word of God is liberating. It's clear. Now if you are under a Bible balanced teacher, you should be thanking God specially every day for that gift. 
Because it's not everywhere that you have that gift. Many people are in hellfire today because somebody, somebody misinterpreted the scripture to them. A lot of people are, in, are, are, are having regret today because somebody misinterpreted the scripture to them. Praise God. I know of people that drop out from the university not because they don't have money, not because they don't have brain, but because they, somebody believed, told them that Jesus will come before the end of the month. And so they drop everything they were doing. They drop everything they were pursuing. Not every, the, Jesus come. Jesus come. Up till today, Jesus has not showed up. Who lied? Jesus or them? Talk to me. Them. So I remember when we get to the mountain, we begin to sing. We are expecting Jesus. We, we can sing that song for three hours. We are expecting Jesus. We are expecting Jesus. We don't know when he shall come. He may come in the morning. He may come in the noontime. He may come in the evening. We don't know when he shall come. That song is correct. Up till today, it is still correct. But the interpretation of many people is wrong. Don't stop your school. Keep going to school while you expect Jesus. Keep doing your business with righteousness while you are expecting Jesus. The Bible says we eagerly wait. We eagerly wait for his coming. But we continue to live our life. We continue to pursue the purpose of God. We continue to live a righteous life. We continue to be hardworking. We continue to reject laziness and indolence. We continue to pursue worthy causes, worthy goals, God glorifying objectives. Are you hearing me now? While we wait for him. But beloved, the tragedy today is that many believers no longer wait or eagerly expect the return of Christ on a daily basis. The question is, how do I know? i show you 11 ways. Number one, when a believer is no longer consistent in his or her spiritual devotion and disciplines, When a believer is no longer consistent in his or her spiritual devotion and discipline, it shows that he is not expecting the return of Jesus. And it is a proof that he doesn't know Christ. When a believer is not consistent in his or her spiritual devotions and discipline, there are two critical disciplines and discipline of every believer. The word of God and prayers. Did you hear me? The word of God and prayers. Those are the two critical devotions and discipline of a believer. When a believer is no longer consistent in those devotion and discipline, it is a proof that he is not expecting the return of Jesus. Every time you open the Bible, it's an indication that you are expecting the return of Jesus. Every time you go to God in prayers, it's an indication that you are expecting. Because once you continue to service your Christian discipline and Christian devotion, it is real proof that you are expecting the return of Jesus. And the larger implication is that you know Christ. Beloved, we must not retreat from our prayer life. We must not retreat from our word life. The Bible must not be strange to you. The word of God must not be strange to you. Are you hearing me now? Praise God. We must live a life of prayers. We live a life of prayers. We live a life of prayer. You remember what the apostles said in the early church? When there was argument about daily distribution of food, do you know that daily distribution of food can make all of them as a child to lose sight of the coming of Jesus? When the Jews and the non-Jews were complaining about lopsidedness in the daily distribution of food, the apostles say, okay, let's select seven people to monitor that every day, but we will give ourselves to 
prayer and the word and the ministry of the word. Because that's the proof that we're on. Your eager waiting is in the servicing of your spiritual discipline and devotion every day. You're, you're, you're looking forward to the return of Jesus is reflected when you service your devotion and your discipline as a Christian every day. Every day, every day, every day. May you have a prayer life. May you have a word life. May you have a word life. May you have a prayer life. Are you hearing me now? Every time you are tired of prayer, every time you are tired of the word of God, you don't want to have any relations to do with it. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to read it. You don't want to study it. You don't want to confess it. You don't want to obey it. You just want to, you just feel that you are tired. It's an indication that you do not know Christ. You are not expecting his, re his return. You are not looking forward. You are not eagerly waiting. Are you hearing me now? A believer that is not expecting the return of Jesus is the one that prayer and the word of God are not his regular practice. Prayer and the word of God are not his regular practice. Somebody walk up to me and he said, Sir, when are we going to be free from this word of God? I said, until Jesus come. Tell somebody until Jesus come. Say it again until Jesus come. Say it again until Jesus come. You are never going to be free from the word of God until Jesus come. You are never going to be free from prayer until Jesus come. In the first instance, the word of God is not a bondage. And prayer is not a bondage. But by the time Jesus will return and we join him in the sky, we do not need the word of God again. We do not need prayer again. This is the time we need it. Here and now. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. Somebody may still be talking about the coming of Jesus, but he is no longer consistent in his spiritual devotion and discipline. He is only talking about it. He is not really expecting and looking forward and eagerly waiting and preparing for the return. And it means he does not know Christ. Number two, when a believer is not focused on spiritual growth and maturity, that's how you know that he is no longer expecting the return of Christ. When a believer is not focused on spiritual growth and maturity, the church and the, the church of this end time unfortunately have lost sight of spiritual growth and maturity. Most of our people today who are Christians are not growing because the church is no longer the atmosphere for growth and development in the spirit. Many churches are no longer stressing and emphasizing teachings on growth and maturity in the spirit. What they, what, they, what they emphasize now is how to make it. How to, if you make it physically and you don't make it spiritually, you will break down permanently. Did you hear that now? How to prosper in the world. There is nothing wrong with that. But prosperity means prosperity is useful when it is going with spiritual growth and maturity. Prosperity will not be abused when you are spiritually mature. I have no problem with the teachings of prosperity as long as it is being preached in the scriptural way. I have no problem in the practice of prosperity as long as we are practicing it the way the Bible says we should practice it. Whatever is in the Bible, I have no problem with it. But if there is no spiritual growth and maturity, we will abuse prosperity. Yes or no? Prosperity will cause us to backslide. When you don't have spiritual growth and maturity, big thing in the hand of a person with a small heart will destroy him. And that's why it is important, beloved. So when a believer is no longer focused, is no longer focused on spiritual growth and maturity, 
It shows that he's not expecting the return of Christ. How many of you know the Bible says Jesus is coming back? Is it for a childish church or a, a mature church? Talk to me. Many times it is the development of the church that is slowing down the return of Christ. The church today is a kiddish church. The church today is not a mature church. The church today is not a growing church. The growth we celebrate is quantitative, not qualitative. The church today is increased in numbers, but we are decreasing in quality. What the church in 70 can do for God, the church today can't do it again. A church today that does not understand the language of sacrifice, but only understand the language of prosperity is a weak church. As we grow in prosperity, we must be growing in sacrifice. Did you hear that now? As we grow in prosperity, we must be growing in commitment. As we grow in prosperity, we must be growing in responsibility. Jesus is coming for a mature church. Jesus is coming for a consistent church. Jesus is coming for a, a soul winning church. Jesus is coming for a praying church. Jesus is coming for a church that preaches the word of God. Jesus is coming for a church that is strong, not a weak church. Hello, somebody. So it is when the church is no longer growing, that's why we delay is coming. We, we, we are the one delay is coming. If Jesus had come last year, how many people would go to hell? If Jesus came last week, how many people will, 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 will lose out? Tell somebody, grow up. Tell somebody, grow up. Anyone that is expecting the return of Jesus must be focused on spiritual growth and what? And maturity. Growth and maturity. Growth and maturity. But when a believer is no longer focused on spiritual growth and maturity, when there is no passion for spiritual development, beloved, that believer is no longer expecting the return of Christ. If a church is no longer emphasizing on growth and maturity in the spirit, teaching the saints and educating the believers on the truth that can cause them to grow and mature, that church is not expecting the return of Christ. It's simply a business enterprise. And we have too many of them in our day. You do, did you hear what I'm saying now? God spoke to me sometime. He said, get yourself ready as a replacing agent. Because God said he will close down many churches that are not aligning with his purpose. God said he knows how to do that. God knows how to end error in a generation. He will shut it down. Are you hearing me now? Did you hear what I said? God knows how to end error. I'm proponent of error. He knows how to shut them down. After he had waited for them to repent, he will shut it down. And God said, those of you who believe you are genuine, be ready to be, to, to be a replacing agent. So that when I shut down error, the people can come and receive the truth. Do you know God does not fight with error? No. He simply plays the truth beside it. Hello, somebody. God doesn't argue with error. He doesn't fight with it. He just plays the truth beside it. And after many times he had waited for the error to repent, didn't repent, he shut it down. May we not disappoint God. May we not disappoint God. So you are not expecting Christ when you are no longer focused on spiritual growth and maturity. If you are still the same way what you used to be as a Christian today is what you used to be five years ago, something is wrong with you. We must be moving from glory to glory. 
you must be getting better in Christianity every day, getting stronger, knowing God more, obeying him more. That is the proof of growth. We don't count the number of years we have been in church when there is no improvement in our character, when there is no improvement in our life, when we don't know God more, when we are no more home. Are you with me, beloved? Number three. A believer is not expecting the return of Christ when he is no longer regular and punctual in fellowship. When he is no longer regular and punctual in fellowship. Regularity and punctuality in fellowship is your sign that you are still expecting Jesus. You are still looking forward. You are still eagerly waiting for the return of Christ. Are you hearing me now? The Bible says we should not forsake the assembly of one another as is the custom of some. Much more as ye see, know that the day is what? Fast as approaching. Is that not in the Bible? Hebrew 10.25? Hebrew 10.25? The proof that you are expecting Jesus, you are expecting the return of Jesus is that you are punctual and regular in fellowship. You are punctual and regular in fellowship. The essence of fellowship is for us to look at ourselves in the mirror of the word of God regularly and see how we stand and see how we stand while we wait for his coming. So you know the area you have to adjust. You know the area you have to adjust. You know the, so that by the time Jesus comes, you will be fully fit to meet him. That is fellowship. But when you no longer come to fellowship, when fellowship is no longer part of your program, when you are so busy that you don't have time for fellowship again, when your business has so grown that you don't have time again, ah, may I not have that kind of business that will not make me have time for God? Hello, somebody? M many of you didn't say amen. You want to have a business that will not make you have time for God? Huh? That you, 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 you just be business, business, you don't have time for God? May you not have that kind of business. Are you with me now? One woman sometimes was praying, God, give me a child. God, give me a child. We we'll join her in praying. And we began to pray, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. And God answered. Bless her with the fruit of the womb. When she delivered the baby, nothing is wrong with her. She had sound delivery. Even as at the time we were doing the, the naming service, she was okay, everything. And I asked her, when are you coming to church? He said, my, my child is a son, so I will wait for 40 days. I said, says who? Written in Matthew chapter what? He said, that's how, that's the pra I said, practice of who? Will you wait for another 40 days before you eat food? Talk to me. I said, no, I have to eat every day. When you are not sick, when you are okay, your baby is okay. He said, for, for boys, it's 40 days. Uh, for girls, it's how many? <laughs> 60 days, Abby. If you stay at home for 60 days without church, you are a dead believer. You are dead spiritually. You are gone. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. When we were having children, you know, we gave you that standard. I remember when we were still having children, mommy was, was teaching Sunday school that time. She was one of our Sunday school teachers that time. She will, she, will, she will teach Sunday school. Somebody will help her carry the baby. She knows how she expressed the milk so that it doesn't disturb. Are you hearing me now? 
And say, I will stay at home for 40 days. I will stay at home for 60 days. Because of this, because of this. Uh, God will think twice before he give you another one. <laughs> praise, praise God. Oh, fellowship. Somebody say fellowship. Is the real proof that you are expecting the return of Jesus? Fellowship. 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 You can pay any price to be in fellowship. Some people, when rain is falling, they don't come to church. If rain can stop you, you are not worthy of what God is bringing. Some people, when the sun is shining too much, say it affects me. Praise God. I told somebody, why don't you, why don't you, why don't you come to church? He said, he doesn't have money for transport. I said, are you going to your office tomorrow, Monday? He said, that's Saturday. I've reserved the money. What makes you believe that <laughs> your office is better than church? He said, ah, hey, hey, that, oh, no, fun, yeah. <laughs> that's where I eat. I said, what makes you believe that it's because you are in that office that you are eating? May your thinking not be shallow. Because the thinking of people is so shallow. They build their life around physical things. If God didn't feed you, no salary, no, no job can feed you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? You must rise above all the elements of physical elements and, and kiddish consideration. Why can't you think that, okay, this is the last money in my hand and I'm going to office tomorrow. I will go to church today. I, I won't miss church. And you, you release your faith and come to church and see if God will not provide for you to go to office the next day. It is where we put God in our life that God will walk. Your attitude will determine how much he can walk in your life. Your attitude and thinking and faith will determine how much he can walk with you and walk in your life. Beloved, God is real. Oh. Tell somebody God is real. Believing in God is real. It will bring to you incredible, incredible benefits and blessings. So, the proof that a believer is expecting Jesus and expecting the return of Christ and that he knows Christ is that is regular and punctual in fellowship. Is regular and punctual in fellowship. When a believer no longer is no longer regular and punctual in fellowship, he can be saying he is expecting return of Jesus. He is not, and he doesn't know Christ. Did you hear what I say now? Time of fellowship are sacred times, and there are opportunities for us to interact with God. Are you hearing me now? Praise God. You can't come to me now, for example, here in Victory Parish, when is our Bible study day? Wednesday. You cannot come to me and say, Daddy, God spoke to me that I should go to a uh, mountain to pray on Wednesday. I will tell you, it's the devil that spoke to you. God can't say you should go to pray on the mountain when, you are when he's waiting for you for an appointment here. I'm not one of the pastors that people will use uh, uh, prophecy, so-called prophecy to control. Because some people believe that until you tell them it is God, they won't, they won't really believe you. Are you with me now? Those of you in Redemption Parish, how can you come to me and say, well, God said I should go and pray on the mountain on Tuesday. I know it's the devil that is talking to you. Because Tuesday is a Bible study. Thursday is a prayer fellowship. Those of you here, you cannot say that God said you should go and pray on the mountain on Monday. Because God is waiting for you here. Are you with me? Our meetings, our meetings are opportunities with God. It is in that fellowship that God will check you again, check you again, check you again, prepare you more, okay? Chisel out things that will make you miss the return of Christ. He will chisel it out of your life, chisel it out of your life, 
call your attention to the area of, uh, of, of your defect, heal you where you are sick, right? And raise you and teach you and, you know, fellowship. And make you to be better fit for the return of Christ. Tell somebody, don't miss fellowship. Don't miss fellowship at all. Don't miss fellowship at all. Especially in a church like this. If you miss fellowship for one week in a church like this, you will need one month to catch up. And I say that with every sense of responsibility. And you know it is true. Yes or no? You know it is true. Because every fellowship is filled. Every fellowship is loaded. Every fellowship is loaded. Every fellowship is loaded. And everything that God is bringing is for your benefit. Number four. When a believer is not diligent in spiritual assignment and Christian service. He is no longer expecting the return of Christ. When a believer is not diligent in is, is what? In spiritual assignment and Christian service. In spiritual assignment and Christian service. He is no longer expecting the return of Jesus. How many of you have read when the Bible says, Occupy till I come? How many of you have read it? In the Bible, you have seen that statement in the Bible before. Occupy till I come. So if you don't expect his coming, will you occupy? How many of you see what I'm sharing this today? If you no longer expect his coming, will you occupy? Occupy till I come means walk until I come. Get engaged in my service until I come. Until I come. Until I come. Get engaged in my service. One man of God, one of the fathers of faith in this country, turned 80 yesterday. Baba W.F. Kumui. And when I still listen to that man's message, at age of 80, he's still preaching with passion. I look at myself, I said, have I started at all? Have I started at all? Those are the things you must be looking at. Hello, somebody? At 80. At 80. He's still preaching not less than five times in a week. At 80. Still conducting crusade. City, city, city. Traveling from places, places, preaching. Ah, I want that grace. Is still standing behind the pulpit and ministering powerfully? He still holds Bible study? Still does uh, development, I mean, workers training? I mean, still preach on Sunday? Still attend citywide crusade and evangelism program different places? May that May the life of that man not condemn those of us who are younger. May the life of that man not condemn those of us who are younger. Are we still together? Occupy till I come. 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 The proof that we are expecting Jesus is your diligence in spiritual assignment and Christian service. If they ask you to be sweeping this floor, keep sweeping it with faithfulness until Jesus come. You only stop sweeping it if they give you another assignment. We talk of prayer assignment, uh, um, night watch, and the uh, gate watch. Somebody asked me something. I said, Ezra, when are we going to stop this prayer? I said, ah. Agba kula dua. Ama agba tama fi kuni. Go go into zoe. Oh, no she in sue. Oh, ribe ninto ma she for life. You do hear that? We we'll pray and pray and pray. We're never going to stop it all. So you better brace up. 
If they say your, your own assignment is prayer assignment, beloved, occupy till he comes. Did you hear? Occupy. Are you hearing me? Occupy till he comes. Occupy till he comes. Occupy till he comes. To stop your assignment is to show that you are no longer expecting the return of Jesus. And it is a proof that you do not know Christ. So to be expecting Jesus is not to go out every day, sit in front of your church and be looking up and be looking up and be looking up and people come and say, what are you doing here? They say, I'm expecting Jesus. I'm expecting Jesus. That's not how to do it. You get yourself involved in what God has called you to do or the service that has been allocated to you, the assignment allocated to you in the church. I taught you severally your assignment in the church is more important to your life and destiny than your salary job. Until you see it like that, you won't be serious with it. Which one is feeding which? Is it your salary job that is feeding your assignment in church or your assignment in church that is feeding your salary job? Talk to me. It is your assignment that is feeding your, your salary job. It is as you work for God that your service on the earth will make you have meaning. It is as you serve God that your, 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 your salary will, 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 be, will satisfy you. Especially if you're a believer. A believer that has no point of service is wasting his life on the earth. Don't let it be that by the time your life is over, the only thing we will know that you have done is that you have been a civil servant for 35 years. That's a poor life. That's a shallow life. That's a, that's a useless manifestation. That may be the prime of achievement for people in the world. That's crash laziness for people in the kingdom. That after the end of your life, the only thing we can say about your life is that he retired after 35 years of civil servant. You didn't make it. You didn't make it. You didn't succeed as a believer. Is somebody hearing me now? We must begin to trace your life and connect your life to purposes of God that matters. Purposes of God that matters. And those things we have to do with what you are doing that directly connect to what God is doing on the earth. Don't let it be that by the time you are, time you are, is over on, in the world and they say he's a, he's a lecturer at so, 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 so university. In fact, he retired as a professor of medicine after he had taught for several years. They say he lived a useful life. As far as God is concerned, you live a, a useless life. When you were lecturing, what were you doing with that lecturing platform that is bringing men to Jesus and servicing the purpose of God? We're not here to eat and collect salary alone. Is somebody hearing me now? Are you a lecturer that is using your lecturing job as a platform to fulfill the purpose of God? If that is what you do, your lecturing job is a reward for the kingdom. They do here. But if the only thing you do is that you just do lecture, you collect salary, you eat it up, you do collect salary, eat it up, and that's all for years as a believer, is a wasted life. May you not live a wasted life. When the books of eternities is open, beloved, it is what we do for God that will be written there. Did you hear? Not the work we do in the, in the world. Not the other things that have no record. What you do in relation to what God is doing that is profit to the kingdom. That's what is going to be written there. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? Beloved, when you are no longer diligent in Christian assignment and Christian service, it shows you are not expecting Jesus again. 
Because any to ba wa si so you can e ma show titi emi o fi de. So ti de. So ti de. Ati o ba ti de kilo ni ka ma E ma show occupy, occupy, keep working, keep serving. Keep on your assignment. Keep on your assignment. Keep on your assignment. Even if the pastor did not say thank you, don't wait for the thank you of pastor. Keep working. Keep serving. Keep working. Keep serving. Keep. You have no right to put down your, your, your sword until the battle is over. Is somebody hearing me now? You have no right to do that. We keep working. We keep serving. We keep serving. We keep serving. They join more assignment to you. You keep working. Do it. They give you more assignment. You keep doing it. They give you more responsibility. You keep doing it. They give you more. You keep doing it. Don't ever be in a season of your life that you are totally useless in terms of the purpose of God. If you can't carry anything, you can pray. It's a serious assignment. Prayer is a serious assignment. Is somebody hearing me now? You must be doing something that is connecting to what God is doing. That is the real proof that you are expecting the return of Jesus. And that's the proof that you know Christ. It's only death that will retire me from the calling. And that is not even now. It's not, we are not even near it now. Even at 70, at 80, I'll continue. The mode may change. But we continue to serve. 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 We will serve till he comes. We will serve till he comes. We will serve till he comes. We will serve till death comes. We serve. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I think about two weeks, was it about two weeks ago when Baba was strong and I went on a Monday to check on him and when I got there in the evening I saw him and his uh, prayer partner Elder uh, Mudipe. They were already set for their prayer uh, gate washing assignment because it's the two of them for that day, which is uh, Monday. Am I correct? Six, 6 p.m. I was there, they were there. In fact, when we were going, mommy said, Ah, we were late oh, that um, Baba will be in the middle of his prayer assignment. I said, Ah, maybe he's strong, so he may not be able to come today. Let's go, we'll still meet him. But when we got there, already the two of them are already there. The two of them are already there. In fact, I was even saying, ah, why, I, I don't think you will come. I thought you would rest. And, ah, he said, ah, we have to do our assignment. And I'm challenged and encouraged. Once a soldier, always a soldier. But sometimes I'm ashamed of some of us who are still younger. To jekwe oleti bat oleti bat yeje oleburuku oleburuku kilo wafa ye she no. Kato she kilo wafa e sabi onile wasi keni yami onile wasi but only lost in other places. Did you hear what I say? You know there are some levels of word that it's only a father that can say it the way it is. Young people these days don't like to serve God. Middle-aged people these days don't like to serve God. When you see elderly people with gray hair still serving God, aren't you ashamed? You can't share. And you expect God to go share assignment. So don't fail God. Did you hear that? Talk to me. Did you hear that? I'm not preaching for you. I'm preaching because it's an assignment. 
So either you encourage me or you don't encourage me, I keep preaching. I want you to have that mindset. I want you to have that mindset. You are working for God, I'm working for God. The assignment they gave to you, they won't ask me. They will ask me the assignment that is given to me. Did you hear that? And do you know every one of us will stand before the judgment seat of Christ? That everyone will receive what he has done. I want to pray that by the time you get, you, by the time you get to heaven and you look down on the portals of eternity, you will not regret the way you spend your life. That's my prayer for you. Because by that time, it will be too late. Number four, and I do that at 6 p.m. on Tuesday. Make sure you sing and talk with your crew. You are there. Work for God with the devotion of a soldier. That's when you can experience the glory and the power of God in your life. He read by Bata and she last year sing. He she read by Bata and I want Baba wa ti do she now. He by Bata 1930 better do by Bata ni. He unto she ti by Bata 1930 if he better by Bata. Oro tu mo si pe the people of today are failing very seriously. I tell people, when a married woman is more committed in church than you, a single person, you are failing in your singlehood. Because there is no reason why a married woman will be more committed to God than you, a single sister. There is no reason why a married brother will be more committed than you, a single brother. Don't waste your bachelorhood. Invest it in the purpose of God. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? I've been on this road for some time. 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 Amen. Tell somebody, take your Christian assignment serious. Take your Christian service serious. When they say you should be an usher, it's an opportunity, my brother. You should be dancing and you should, be, you should thank God. Better people are still there. Don't let, don't do it, don't behave in a way that God will replace you. Oh, better, it's better for you to pull out a gun and shoot me than to tell me to go and sit down not to preach again. I will die, yo. Because once they say that you can't preach again, that's your obituary. Don't go to the house. Don't go to the house. Don't go to the house. Don't go to the Are you hearing me now? Once of any can we go and suspend the college? He said, Oh, no, do you want to go to the house? Oh, try it. You try it. Oh, try it. Oh, go to the house after 10 years. Where are you? Oh, go to the house. Go to the house. Did you hear that? Oh wow. There is an anointing of the Holy Spirit on me this afternoon. And I want you to respond to the call of God upon your life. The critical way to expect the return of Jesus and to prove that you know Jesus is serve him. Serve him. Serve him. Serve him. Serve him. Be consistent. Be faithful in service. Don't behave to God as if you are dealing with man. God is faithful. God sees all of us. God knows all of us. God knows why I'm preaching. God knows why you're serving. Whatever assignment you are given, if you don't have assignment in the church, go and come, come and ask for assignment. Every responsible member of the church must be, must be assigned. I love somebody. And you must be faithfully doing the work. Not, not when the pastor is there. Not, not to please anybody, but to please the God who considered you worthy. The mistake that some people do. Eh, 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 you say, I eh, 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 When I'm preaching, every time I prepare, I prepare to preach. I preach to the world. What I'm teaching now is what I'll be teaching when we are one million. Is somebody hearing me now? Tell somebody be serious with God. Be serious. With, how many of you want God to help you? How many of you want God to help you? 
you really want him to help you. Whatever he has given you to do as an assignment is your opportunity to help God. Did you hear that? Is your opportunity to what? To help God. God needs you to help him on the earth for his work and his purpose. Your, that is your opportunity for assignment. You help him and see if he will not help you. God can do without my help. He can do without it. But I cannot do without his help. I hope you know that. Tell yourself, I cannot do without his help. I cannot do without his help. He can do without my help. Say it, he can do without my help. But I cannot do without his help. Christian service. Not to serve till death. Not to serve till death. Did you hear? Not to serve till what? Till death. We serve till death. We don't retire. We serve. The mode may change. The services may change. But we serve till death. Be faithful in what you are given. Did you get that? Okay. Number, number what now? Number five. When a, Christ, when a believer does not prioritize soul winning and evangelism. That is the proof that he is not expecting the return of Jesus. When a believer does not prioritize soul winning and evangelism. That is to show that he is not expecting the return of Jesus. Those that are expecting the return of Jesus... They prioritize soul winning. They prioritize evangelism. They use every opportunity to win soul. They use every opportunity to talk to people. Many of us have friends. You have never spoken to them about Jesus for once. And you say you are expecting the return of Jesus. And you say you know Christ. And you know that those your friends need Jesus. Many of us, we have family members that don't know Jesus. You have never invited them to service. You have never shared church program with them. You have never connected them one way or the other to the knowledge of Jesus. Beloved, take, make sure you set a target that I will connect every member of my family to Jesus. Are you with me now? The question is this, beloved. What effort are you personally making as a Christian to win souls? What effort are you personally making as a Christian to win soul? What effort? Every Monday, when we have navigating life through grace, I will share all. I will share that video to every everybody in my contact. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Everybody in my contact. Every, my, own way of, my own way of saying how are you, how are you, is I send that message to you. Everybody in my contact, I will send that message to them. Not because I want them to see me that I'm preaching. But that's what I have to give them, to connect them to Jesus. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Peter said to that man at the, at the beautiful gate, he said, silver and gold we have none, but much as we have, will give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Wouldn't you like to see your family members in heaven? Or do you think you'll be comfortable in heaven when they are in hell? Are you with me now? There are many of, you say I can't talk, I can't talk, I can't talk. What of the messages that has been preached? This one I'm preaching now, in the next one day or two days, they put it on YouTube. What does it cost you to send it to somebody? Let somebody hear the gospel through you. You may not be able to preach like I do. But take the preaching and share with somebody. Let somebody hear the gospel through you. Let somebody, don't you know how you tell people about yourself? Tell somebody about Jesus. 
If the only thing we do is just come to church, we write notes, we hear the message, we go home, we don't share the word of God, we don't share Jesus with anybody, we are not expecting the return of Jesus. And we do not know him. I pray that you will begin to creatively look at opportunities to share the gospel. Let somebody hear the gospel through you. Let somebody hear the gospel through you. Let somebody hear the gospel through you. Number next, when a believer does not live soberly, righteously, but is living carelessly and frivolously. That's the proof that he's not expecting Jesus. When he does not live soberly, when he does not live righteously, when he's living carelessly and frivolously, when he's living anyhow, that is the proof that he's not expecting Jesus. And that's the proof that he doesn't know Christ. A believer expecting Jesus lives soberly. He lives righteously. He doesn't live carelessly. He doesn't live frivolously. He doesn't live anyhow. Is that okay? Number seven, am I correct now? When a believer does not practice the spiritual principle of love, When a believer does not practice the, principle, the spiritual principle of love in his life, but he harbors offenses, he harbors bitterness, he harbors unforgiveness, he harbors revenge and malice. Do you know there are believers today that keep malice? Do you know there are believers today that are harboring unforgiveness? That keep bitterness in their heart. Beloved, the Bible gives room for anger. But he said, be angry and what? And sin not. Let not the sun come down upon your rod. Hello, somebody. When somebody has done what is wrong, you are at liberty to correct that person. You are at liberty to be displeased. But don't let the sun come down your rod. Be angry and sin not. Be angry and sin not. A believer that is expecting Jesus does not sleep over an offense. A believer that is expecting Jesus does not harbor malice. Does not say, well, I will never forgive that person. I will never forgive that person. Does not harbor unforgiveness. Does not harbor malice. Does not harbor bitterness. Things will continue to happen. But a believer expecting Jesus will clear it off and forget it. And move on. He doesn't say, well, I remember what he has done. I will never forgive him. I will never forgive him. I will deal with him. I will revenge. That's not a believer. Hello, somebody. You will offend people, beloved. No matter how careful you are. And people will also what? Offend you. That's how it is in life. But as believers, that is expecting the return of Jesus, we clear our table. Tell somebody, clear your table. Say it again, clear your table. Regularly clear your table. Clear your table. Clear your table. Ensure that there is no time that you have anybody in your heart for evil. You don't know when death will come and you don't know when Jesus will come. Sometimes men, human beings, don't know the day we sleep and they will not wake up in the morning. Why must you harbor somebody in your heart? Why must you say you are a Christian when you have for somebody? Some people even say we will, uh, until we get to heaven before we we'll, we'll sort it out. Do you think God will have time to save two matter? He said, Pastor, you don't know what he has done. Yes, I don't know what he has done. But God said, forgive. Forgive. Release the person in your heart. Don't be bitter. Don't wish the person evil. Don't want to change. Don't, don't, don't keep malice. That is the proof that you are expecting the return of Jesus. And that's the proof that you know Christ. Between husband and wife, set two matters, set two issues. Don't sleep over an issue. Did you hear? If you have people you are put in your mind that you say you, know, you will not forgive because of whatever they have done, be, by the time we finish this service and you get back home, go and restitute. Go and clear your table. Go and clear your table so that you can sleep well. 
Did you hear what I just said? Go and clear your table. Don't let anybody give you up attention. Take life simple. Take life simple. Take li Even if the person says he will not, he, he is not sorry for what he has done, release him. Release him. Everybody has conscience. Is somebody hearing me now? Don't seek to want to. I will, I will revenge. I will deal with it. I will deal with it. When, uh, when are you going to? Uh, how long are you going to do that? Amen. You must practice the spiritual principle of love. Unconditional love. Don't harbor offenses. Don't harbor bitterness. Don't harbor unforgiveness. Don't harbor revenge. Don't harbor malice. Number eight. A believer is not expecting the return of Jesus when he's too attached to the material things of this world. He's too attached to the material things of this world. He can disobey God to buy material things of the world. He can walk away from God to acquire material things of this world. He can violate the instructions of God, the instructions of the word of God, just because we want to buy a car, just because we want to build houses. He can continue to entertain and live the life of sin just because he wants to build houses. Hello? Those that built great houses yesterday, where are they? Well, did they carry their house to heaven? He can live an unrighteous life just because he wants to have a car. When a so-called believer is becoming too attached to the material things of the world and is too busy and buried in the activities that contribute nothing to God's purpose, he's too busy and buried in the activities that contribute nothing to God's purpose. Hello, somebody. That person is not expecting the return of Jesus. Don't be too busy and buried in the activities that contribute nothing to the purpose of God. Beloved, I have three more and then we'll pray. I wish I could divide this message, but I can't divide it. A believer is not expecting the return of Jesus when he is easily discouraged with challenges and problems of life, with persecution. When a believer is easily discouraged, little problem, you stop coming to church. Little problem, you stop serving Jesus. Little problem, you, uh -uh. little problem, you deny God. Little problem, you give God ultimatum. If you don't do it, if you don't do it before the end of this year, I won't serve you again. When a believer is easily discouraged, beloved, there will be problems in life. Yes or no? Oh, there are problems in life. You know, I don't know what makes people think that it is because I'm a believer. That's why I have problem. How many of you know that many people think like that? What makes you feel is because you are a Christian. That's why you have problem. That's a deception of the devil. What makes you feel is because, or if not because of the church I go to, now I won't have this problem. What makes you feel is because you go to church. That's why you have challenges. What makes you feel is because uh, if not that I'm a worker in our church now, I will know how to solve this problem. <laughs> That's a deception of the devil. Have you asked people that don't come to church if they have problems or not? Don't they have problems? Talk to me. If some of them have greater problems than you have. Have you asked from people that didn't come to church? Don't they have problems? Have you asked people that didn't know God at all, that don't serve God at all, that don't have anything to do with God? Don't they have problems? Problems are normal in the world. Challenges will come. And many when you are a Christian, persecution will come. Be strong in your heart. Be strong. Paul says, who shall separate us? 
from the love of Christ. He now began to list them. Is it tribulation? Is it persecution? Is it hunger? Is it ah ah? Just because you don't have dinner to eat yesterday, Jesus is no longer Lord. Is Jesus Lord? Answer me. God is good. God is good. I didn't hear you. God is good. God is good. Is anybody saying not all the time? Is anybody saying not all the time? Is it all the time that something good happened? But even when something bad happened, is God good? Is God good? You must rise above all this physical, emotional consideration. Beloved, God is good all the time. Be strong. Don't let the problem of life worry you. Don't let the problem of life worry you. One of our fathers in faith in this country lost his son, I mean, a few weeks ago. You see an example of maturity. An example of strength. Somebody say it didn't pain him. Lose your child and let's see how it pain you. To me, that's a serious godly example. He served God. He continued to serve God. Now, what if he say he's not going to serve God again? Will that bring the, the child back? Will he bring the child back? Talk to me now. Will he bring the child back? And so why will he do that foolish thing? He continued to serve God. Continue to serve God. Continue to serve God. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. If you are expecting Jesus, persecution will not stop you. Problem will not worry you. Problem will not worry you. You will be stronger in problem. You will believe God. You will not believe that it's God that caused the problem. You will stand against the devil. Stand with God. Are you hearing me now? The Bible says, if weeping endure for a night, what? Joy comes in the morning. Believers that cannot withstand that are easily discouraged because of the problem and challenges of life, they have no staying power in Christ. And they can easily backslide. They can easily backslide. Number 10. A believer is no longer expecting the return of Jesus when he does not see his life and activities on earth as his strategic preparation for eternity. When he does not see his life and activities on the earth as his strategic preparation for what? For eternity. Beloved, your life on the earth is your strategic opportunity to prepare for eternity. When you are no longer seeing your life and activities on the earth as your strategic opportunity to prepare for eternity, you are no longer expecting the return of Jesus. And it means you do not know Christ. Every life we are living here and every activity we get involved in is our strategic opportunity to prepare for eternity. Somebody say eternity. Use your life to prepare for eternity. You use your life. It is what you do here that determines the nature of your eternity. Hello, somebody. It is what you do here. If you are going to heaven, it is what you do here. If you are going to hell, it is what you do here. Use your life and activity to prepare for eternity. You must have a philosophy of accountability before God. That is what shows that you are expecting the return of Jesus. And that's what shows that you know Christ. Let me take the last one. When a believer is not expecting the return of Jesus, he is so consumed with the pursuit of prosperity in the physical, even at the expense of prosperity in the purpose of God. He is so consumed with the pursuit of prosperity in the physical, even at the expense of prosperity in the purpose of God. 
in this world, when you begin to pursue prosperity in the physical, even at the expense of your prosperity in the purpose of God, it shows that you do not expect the return of Christ. It shows that you do not expect the return of Christ. Beloved, when God gave me this message, I asked myself a question. With all this truth and revelation, how many in the world today are believers that are truly expecting the return of Jesus? You will agree with me in terms of sincerity that there are not many. But beloved, you can join the list today. That's why the message came. You can join the list. If you go back home and look at this teaching very well, you will see how a believer must expect the return of Jesus. What are the things that a believer will be doing that will show that he is actually expecting the return of Jesus? We don't say we expect his return only in our mouth, our attitude and our life. Our conduct and our character we show. God is not looking at what you will say. He's looking at how we behave. What's our attitude? That is what determines our position. The Lord gave me three words. Three statements that summarizes everything. And I would like you to write down as we pray. The Lord said, a believer that is expecting the return of Jesus. Number one, we live ready. We live ready. Live ready. Live ready. Tell somebody, live ready. Tell somebody, live ready. Live ready. Because there is no time to be ready again. Be ready now. Live ready. Live ready. Did you hear? Live ready. How many of you remember the parable that Jesus spoke about in the Bible of the ten virgins? Five were wise. Five were not wise. You remember that parable? What is the difference between the wise and the foolish? The wise had enough oil in their lamp. They were ready that it can come any time. And they were ready that any time it come, we are ready. We are ready anytime. They have extra. But those that were not wise, they didn't factor into it that it can come anytime. So they didn't have extra oil. So by the time it came in the middle of the night, one thing is very clear about the coming of Jesus. It will be when nobody expects. It will be when nobody what? Expects. He came in the middle of the night. And then those who were expecting five that were wise, just, they, just, they, just, they just increased their alarm. And then it started burning. But the other ones that were not wise, their, lamp, their oil was exhausted. They asked the one that had, they give us money. They said, no, 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 we can't give you. So that it will not be enough for us. Go, go and buy. By the time those people went and said they want to go and buy, by the time they came back, the door was locked. May the door of heaven not be locked against you. The solution is live ready. Tell somebody, live ready. Live ready. That is a song we used to sing, I remember, and I want the, 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 manif the magnifiers to look for that song. One day you're going to sing that song. It could happen in a moment. It could happen in a moment. It could happen in a moment. Jesus Christ will come again. It could happen in a moment. It could happen. Live your life like that. It could happen in a moment. It could happen in a moment. Don't be conscious of death and forget the return of Jesus. It could happen in a moment. It could happen. It may be in the service like Jesus will come. And this is you. You are still, you are still struggling with the truth. And Jesus comes. What will happen? What will happen? 
and there is no second batch of rapture. Do you know? Hello? Hello? No second batch of rapture. Once you miss the merit list, that's all. You know, in, in admission to university, you have different batches. Yes or no? You have different batches, different batches, different batches. The last batch, they say VC list. There is nothing like that in rapture. Once you miss the merit list like this, that's all. And if you don't go with rapture, you are lost forever. You know why? You cannot use your blood to save yourself again. Because those who will get saved are the people that will now use their blood. Are you hearing me now? Because the Antichrist will torment them. Nobody can survive that torture. That is why Instead of using your blood, use the blood of Jesus now. And get ready. Live ready. Number two, live prepared. 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 Live ready. Live prepared. Live ready. Live prepared. Live ready. One day my ministerial father just called me on a Thursday. And he said, how is your Saturday, your Friday and Saturday looking like? And do you have any schedule on Friday and Saturday? I said, well, I don't have any schedule. If you want to send me, even if I have schedule, I will, I will push it back. I don't have a schedule that cannot accommodate your schedule. He said, okay. I want you to preach for me at Oyo tomorrow and Saturday. It's a major minister's conference. He couldn't attend it. He was invited, but he couldn't go because those organizers had to change their initial date. So the new date that was given now was clashing with the program that he has. So he said, but I told them that I have somebody that can do a good job. And they said, okay. And he said, will you go for me? I said, yes, sir. He said, they will send the team of the meeting to you. I was to do crusade, to speak at a crusade on the next day, Friday evening at your town. And I was to speak at the minister's conference on Saturday. Are you hearing me now? And the, the likes of the president of Khan was invited to that meeting. And very many other senior men of God. Because I was not in the view when the meeting was conceived. It was my own ministerial father that was in the view. I hope somebody is following my story. Because we are going somewhere. When did I say he called me? Thursday. When is the meeting starting? Friday evening I must be ministering. Alright? And after some time, after he had called me, they sent the team to me. The team of the, of the, of the meeting is the name of Jesus. And then the team that I will be using to minister to the to the uh, ministers on Saturday is ministering like Jesus. And I was to leave first thing tomorrow morning. If I had been joking here, I would have been a disaster there. Did you hear? If I have underrated you, and I was, all I was just doing is just wishy washy, wishy washy, pretending to be see, when I'm not seriously preparing myself. It would have shown there. The next morning, we were off to Oyo. When we got to Oyo, that day, they were skeptical. I told you the story. How many of you heard the story before? They were skeptical. It, you, you will know in them the way they look at us. The way, 
is that they are looking at us that <laughs> we invited Reverend Areogun. <laughs> is this one? Is this <laughs> the way they are looking at us? <laughs> they were they were they were afraid. <laughs> well, because he said this is son. <laughs> they, they were afraid to be disappointed. <laughs> I was talking to God. God help me. Because I know it's a major test. God help me. But the preparation is the foundation of that prayer. Are you hearing me now? So in the evening, when it was time for me to preach, the man of God that organized the program came up and he confirmed what we saw them, what we saw in their faces. He said, well, it is Reverend Areogun we invited though. But he said, he has a son that can. So, <laughs> I don't know him oh, and I've not listened to his message before. When the man of God begins to talk like that, he's simply saying, don't blame me if he found Buo. That's what he's, uh, did you hear? That's it. I was just smiling. Relax in the Holy Ghost. Mommy was just praying. Was just praying quietly. And when it was time, I came forward, handled the microphone, and the Holy Ghost spoke. It didn't get up to five minutes. That man sat right. He sat right. You can see all their faces. Everything glue. Everything glue. You can see all their faces. And I love them. By the time I finished ministering, the man came up again. He said, I have a sin to confess. And he confirmed their fears. That he said, they have no regret at all. He said, ah, truly, ah, you are true son of Aregu. Truly. As if that was not enough on Saturday. By the time the Holy Ghost finished ministering through me, all of them, big, big. In fact, one of the man of God that our ministers so said, he was in Akura doing his, uh, uh, he was in Akura as a student at the Federal College of Agriculture, Akura, in 1973. So, you know, <laughs> so, 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 you know, they are senior men of God. They are not uh, <laughs> men of God that are putting their glasses here. And they uh, are, with experiences and graces. By the time I finished, all of them were on their faces. It was, it was a revival. It was a revival. All of them were on their faces. Come and see the cry. Everybody was shouting. Everybody was praying. Everybody was praying. I knew God glorified himself that day. Everything is on the foundation of preparation. If I had been joking here, I would have been a disaster there. And before we took, we took, I had to travel back from Oyo, first return to Oshogbo to give feedback to my father before coming back to Akure. Before we got to Oshogbo, news has reached him. News has reached him. News has reached him. News has reached him. Because I was not joking here. Where did I develop my strength? Is here. Where did I develop that grace? Is here. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Tell somebody, live prepared. 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 Those who don't live prepared are wasters of strategic opportunities. They are wasters of opportunities. Live prepared. Live prepared. Live prepared. Live on the go. Live on the go. Live on the go. That should be your mentality. The last one, live for eternity. Live for eternity. Live for eternity. There is a thin line between life and eternity. There is a thin line between life and eternity. There is a thin line between life and eternity. The easiest place to cross over to is eternity. The easiest place to cross over to is eternity. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Somebody that is going to eternity would have gone there before somebody that is going to America would get to America. I'm telling you. The easiest, the easiest place to cross over to is eternity. Is eternity. Live for eternity. Live for eternity. If you sleep and you didn't wake up, and you woke up on the other side, 
and you look back to this other side, will you regret or will you be fulfilled? Determine it now. Determine it now. Determine it now. Determine it now. Let's rise up on our feet. I want to pray for you today that the grace and the anointing to live ready will rest upon you. That after all you have had this teaching and everything you have written down, your take home will be the anointing to live ready. Your take home will be the anointing to live prepared. Your take home will be the grace to live for eternity. May you not be a waster of time. Those who are expecting the return of Jesus are not wasting time. They are using time for God's purpose. Because they are living ready. 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 Are you hearing what I'm saying? They are living ready. Top your hands to Jesus. I want you to pray. Lord, I receive the grace to live ready. I receive the grace to live prepared. I receive the anointing to live for eternity. Time will end. Eternity will never end. Time will end. Eternity will never end. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Oh, receive that grace. We are going to pray two more prayers, but first of all, receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. To live ready. That is what it means to be expecting the return of Jesus. Live ready. Live ready. It could happen in a moment. Jesus Christ will come again. It will happen in a moment. It will happen in a moment. Jesus Christ will come again. Live ready. Live prepared. Live for eternity. Receive that grace today. Receive that anointing. Receive that anointing. To receive, to live ready, to live prepared, to live for eternity. I will not destroy my eternity with my life. I will not destroy my eternity with the life I'm living now. I will not use my life, my current life, to destroy my eternity. Receive the grace to be conscious of the return of Jesus. Don't just be afraid of death. Be conscious of the return of Jesus. Be conscious of the return of Jesus. Jesus Christ might come anytime. He will come anytime. May you truly be eagerly waiting. May you truly be eagerly looking forward. May you truly be eagerly waiting. May Philippians 3.20 be a reality in your life. May Philippians 3.20 be a reality in your life. That you are truly waiting and looking on of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. The second prayer is this. I choose. Now you have received the grace now. Now choose now. Is somebody here? Let me know. The grace release is from God. That's God's responsibility. Your choice now is your own responsibility. Lift up your hands to Jesus. Say after me, Lord, I choose to live ready. As from today. I will not citation. I choose to live prepared. I choose to live for eternity. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Pray, 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 pray. As you go home, let this be in your consciousness. I will live ready. I choose to live ready. I choose to live prepared. I choose to live for eternity. I will not be a foolish virgin. I will be a wise virgin. A wise virgin. Living a life that qualifies him for rapture. Living a life that qualifies him for eternity. That whenever Jesus returns, I will be ready. 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 I will be prepared. Like play, like play. You have had it again. It will, it will come. Be ready for him. Be ready for him. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. This is the last prayer, but I want you to sing this song. Will you be ready when the Lord shall come? Will you be ready when the Lord shall come. I will be ready. I will be ready. I will be ready when the Lord shall come. I will be ready. I will be ready. me we 
are singing that song again, but if God opens your eyes, there are many people that we believe has gone home to rest that are burning in hellfire now. If God opens your eyes, you will see that many that we think has gone home to rest are burning in hellfire. Because when death came, they were not ready. They were not prepared. They have lived a life that destroyed their eternity. Don't be a casualty of time. Don't be a casualty in this life. Choose the principle of living ready because Jesus will come. My prayer for you is that you will be ready. Oh, you will be ready. Anytime the Lord showed up, you will be ready. Every believer, a true believer must be ready to go anytime. Must be ready to go anytime. Must be ready for the trumpet sound anytime. It can sound. You must be ready. That's what it means to be a believer. I want to pray for you that you will be ready. You will be ready. You will not experience the tragedy of not being ready. Because not to be ready is a tragedy. Alright? I will be ready. I will be ready when the Lord shall come. Surely I will be ready. Yes, Lord, I will be ready. Yes, Lord, I will be ready. How will you be ready when the Lord shall come? Oh, will you be ready when the Lord shall come? Sing it, everybody. I will. I will be ready. I will be ready. I will be. Ready when the Lord shall come. Surely I will be ready. I will be ready. Ready, Lord. I will be ready when the Lord shall come. Will you be faithful when the Lord shall come? Will you be faithful when the Lord shall come? I will be faithful. I will be faithful. I will be faithful. I will be faithful when the Lord shall come. Surely. Yes, Lord, I will be faithful. I will be faithful when the Lord shall come. Listen to me. We'll sing that song one more time, especially the faithful part of it. There is something I know that you also know that we all us all that all of us know, and that thing is that. There is an end of man. That much all of us know. Am I correct? You know that there is an end of man. That man will end one day. That you will end one day. You know. I know. Every one of us know. Either by death or through the rapture. End will come one day. To your life, to my life. All of us know that. But when will that be? And how will it be? None of us know. That's why we must be ready and faithful. All the time. Because you never can tell. We believe we will live long. We believe we will fulfill our destiny. But beloved, the truth is that only God knows the end. They do here. Only him knows when Jesus will return. And only him knows when you will die. Your responsibility is to be ready. May you not be carried away by this world. May you not be taken out by the frivolities of this world. 
May we go home tonight, I mean today, with that mature thoughts that the end will come one day. And that will help you to live a life that is faithful and ready. Will you be faithful when the Lord shall come? Will you be faithful when the Lord shall come? Yes, Lord, I will be faithful. That's my decision. I will be faithful. I will be faithful when the Lord shall come. I will be faithful, O oh Lord. I will be faithful, O oh Lord. I will be faithful when the Lord shall come. You don't know the food you will eat last. You don't know the cloth you will wear last. You don't know the current picture that we use as your obituary. I'm not making you afraid. But your strength is in your happiness, reality, and truth. That's where you are mature. That's where you are strong. I'm not saying you will die tomorrow or die next year. No. Surely you will fulfill your days. Surely you, with long life it will satisfy you. Will prosperity will satisfy you, but it is either by rapture or by death, the end will come. You know it, and I know it. I want us to go before the Lord. Go before the Lord and ask the Lord to help you. In the light of this teaching, that you will not be found one day, that this message will not condemn you on the last day. I want you to sincerely pray. This is not a common message. This is a visitation of the Lord. Let every one of us go before the Lord and ask for his mercy and ask for his help. Oh, beloved, I'm going to do the same because the same message we, we, we is, is for all of us. Lord, I will not be condemned by this truth. Lord help me. Lord help me. Lord help me. Lord help me. That I will be ready. And I will be faithful. When the end comes. Let's talk to the Lord. Talk to your father. Talk to your God. Talk to your creator. That this message, this truth that you have written down. That you have heard today. Will not condemn you on the last day.